Ladies and gentlemen, I have a guest in town, so this will be a very short podcast, but get ready, it starts now. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the podcast. I am joined once more by my good friend, Mike Schubeck from Mike'sRoadTrip.com. Mike, welcome to the podcast. Hey, Steve. So nice to be back with you again. Did you have a nice Thanksgiving holiday? I did. I'm back here in uh, Arizona where it's nice and sunny and warm. Uh, your uh, hometown area as well. That is true. I was talking with my mother, and she was really rubbing in the delightful temperatures that you guys are having since we are in single digits just above freezing. Oh, yeah. It has been fantastic. It's uh, hovering about 80 degrees. been sunny uh, the last few days. It's been awesome. Oh, that is cool. Now, as you know, this is a travel portion of the podcast. So, my friend... Where, what shall we talk about this week? You had a quite the epic road trip recently. Well, actually, it's been a few months. Uh, this past summer, I did a real epic road trip. I was part of the Rand McNally and USA Today's Best of the Road, uh, which encompasses five different teams, each with a different category, tasked with uh, finding out what town, what small town in America has the best food, is the most patriotic, the most fun, etc. And uh, so I had teamed up uh, with a fellow travel blogger, Brian Cox of the Travel Vlogger, and uh, he and I scoured the country in search of the best food in small town America. So, okay, so food is always great, and, and, and Brian's a great guy. He was actually on the podcast earlier this year. How much distance did you travel? Well, each team traveled a different route, but ours was encompassed about 4,700 miles in 30 days. Well, that's not too, actually, that's not too bad, but still, that's an incredible amount of distance. Well, it, it may not sound like a whole lot as far as distance, but we were uh, circumnavigating the country to these different towns. And while we went to each town, you know, we had to try tons of different restaurants. Uh, we had to videotape the whole experience. All the while, the Travel Channel is following us, and we're having to do multiple takes and everything else. So uh, it was pretty overwhelming, but it was a lot of fun. I bet. So where did you start off from? We, uh, well, I started personally from Seattle, Washington, and I took a flight to Washington, D.C., uh, which is where the rally started. And from there, uh, our trip took us to Charlottesville, Virginia, and then we went up to upstate New York, to Lewiston, New York, which is uh, just outside of Niagara Falls. Mm -hmm. Then we went over to Bloomington, Indiana, and then to Burnsville, Minnesota, which is just outside of Minneapolis. And then we went all the way south to one of my favorite towns, uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico. And then we headed up to Walla Walla, Washington, which was our last stop. And then we ended in Seattle. Okay. So you, you, you hit all these different locations. You're driving. You're doing, you're, you're doing probably what many people think of as the dream job, being forced <laughs> to eat delicious food. The best delicious food in each location. What was a typical day like? Oh, my gosh, Steve. Uh, each day was epic in itself. Um, for example, when we got to Charlottesville, uh, we were able to get comfortable in our hotel. And then the next day, we hit 15 restaurants in a single day. Oh, my gosh. Non-stop eating from morning, noon, until night. <laughs> But I have to say, I mean, it was a wonderful opportunity to try a lot of different foods, you know, local cuisine. A lot of the markets we were in, they really encompassed that uh, or embraced, I should say, that food to fork movement. Um, so that was uh, that was really cool to find uh, to try a lot of the local fare. Oh, I bet. So so when, when you went into a place and you were looking, well, for, first, uh, I'm assuming that they, they put you up at a place. Yes. So what can you tell us about, because when you travel around, you like to do bed and breakfasts and boutique hotels. What is the difference between 
going on a road trip that style and then staying in a small town place because what what where, where did they put you up was it was it like chain hotels or was it a mix of things well, actually, uh, Choice Hotels uh, was one of the sponsors, and uh, they have uh, hotels like Comfort Inn and uh, mm-hmm. Kano Lodge and what have you. And so we did stay at a number of those uh, along the route. Uh, but once we got into the communities, we were able to stay at local B&Bs and some of the boutique hotels. So they were really quite nice because these were all small towns. So some of the accommodations were very reminiscent of the places I would normally stay. Oh, that's fantastic. Now, as, as far as the, the nitty-gritty details, you were tasked with finding the best food. So what can you tell us about the most memorable meals that you've had on this journey? Oh, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, and, you know, they unfortunately, because we were going at such a record pace, things started to kind of blur together. But I uh, remember uh, there was a place in Charlottesville, Virginia, that uh, was called the Clifton Inn. We didn't stay there, but it was also a bed and breakfast. But they had a beautiful restaurant uh, with the, uh, an outside deck. And we got this really special table that was inside the um, – uh, the kitchen and we got to see the chefs preparing each of the meals and it was that was an extraordinary opportunity um, and another one that really just like pops out at me was in Santa Fe New Mexico at um, <laughs> the Coyote Cafe which is a really well-known place there in Santa Fe. And we just had such an amazing meal. After we had tasted a lot of different places, we ended up having a full course meal at Coyote Cafe. And the chef just wanted to show us everything that they prepare. And he was bringing out one thing after another. And we're Mm. like, no mas, no mas, please. We can't eat more. We were there till midnight eating. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Now, when, when you're driving... Now, now, did the rally have <clears throat> predetermined spots for you to go? Yes. Uh, so each uh, category, uh, Rand McNall in USA Today has has a contest on their website, bestoftheroad.com, where they uh, select the top six vote-getting cities for okay. each of those categories. So, yes, they were predetermined. Now, how much distance on average between the locations were there so I, I guess I guess what I'm asking is how much driving time did you actually have to put in because you mentioned over four thousand miles. Yeah, um, the first few legs were not all that bad. Uh, so from DC to Charlottesville, it was only a few hours, maybe four hours, and then from Charlottesville up to uh, Lewiston, New York, was I think maybe about ten hours, mm-hmm. and so couple of legs were within short two-day drives. Then our longest drives were from Burnsville, Minnesota, all the way to Santa Fe, uh, which those were some hefty drives. And then all the way up to uh, Santa Fe, back up to uh, the northwest at Walla Walla. So those were two of our longest trips. Now, did you ever have to like stop halfway through and, and be put up for the night, or was it always destination to destination? Oh, some of those longer trips, we would stay the night in a smaller town in between. Did you? Okay, so so here here's my question. Even though these smaller towns were not part of, say, the rally for the official vote-getting destinations, when you were in these smaller towns, did you have that mindset of, like, okay, I'm here. Is the local food that we're actually staying at on par with what we're taste-testing to report on? Yeah, that's a good question, Steve. Uh, And honestly, we were so exhausted typically from driving while editing. And and also, also we had been eating so much that we really didn't have much of a a thought to go and try fares in those other cities. Mm. We really just needed sustenance. (laughs) So just pick up something real basic just to get us by. Okay. So... Going going back to the actual road trip itself, four thousand miles, one month. You're the road trip guy. What is what stands out in terms of planning a trip like the rally versus a trip that you plan out? Any similarities or differences? Well, let's see. I would say, you know, so much of this. 
what was nice about this trip is that when we got into a community, the Convention and Visitors Bureau and the stakeholders in the community had everything planned out for us. Mm-hmm. So that's how it probably differed from something I would do because I'm doing all the planning and all the planning was done for me. And I have to say, in that context, that was pretty nice. And in terms of, I guess, distances between ultimate destinations. So you, you mentioned a few legs where you had to be put up at a hotel in a smaller community. When you plan a road trip, Do you sometimes do that or do you always say, okay, this is going to be a driving day. I'm going to look for a location between point A and say point C and make this a point B, a destination itself. Or if you're trying to get to a location, you just drive until you can't drive anymore, find a a small place to to shack up for the night and then move on. Yeah. So what I I typically like to keep my road tra- driving distance is pretty short because I really love to pull over and photograph and just take my time and truly enjoy the road trip. So I'm typically, when I'm tra- planning a trip, most often I am not driving more than say, two or 250 miles a day. Okay. So I try and keep it pretty short. And if I do have a destination that's farther away, I might uh, either uh, camp out or, uh, you know, maybe stay in a local hotel or something just in between places. Okay. Now, as far as, as, as this particular rally, what are some of the things you learned as a traveler doing this? Uh, more specific? Well, I mean, I mean, anything that stands out that you know, something that you did on this trip that you had never done before, because you've you've been traveling for a long time. You have your own blog, you have your own video channel. Anything that you really learned do- doing this this rally? Well, I think maybe not so much learned, but affirmed okay. the fact that um, I. When I do my road trip, I try and stay in the smaller towns across this country because there's so many other travel writers and and bloggers out there covering the bigger city. And I think for me, it really affirmed how special small town America is. And it uh, it, it really has a a place in my heart. And I love to find those off the beaten places uh, that not everybody is traveling to. Oh, that's very cool. Now, with the holidays approaching, do you have any special trips in store in the next few months? You know, I actually, uh, I've been traveling quite a bit. Uh, Just a few weeks ago, I got back from a trip to Puerto Rico. Uh, I did a road trip around the island. And uh, and then I've just driven from Seattle down to the Phoenix area, my hometown. And so right now, my immediate plans are just to kind of get caught up on some content and start planning some trips in the future. So I don't actually have anything... uh, uh, Eminent. Uh, so let's let's talk about the Puerto Rico trip. You, just, you drove around the island. Any differences in road tripping, say, in the United States, the proper area, versus Puerto Rico? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I didn't have a lot of time in Puerto Rico. It was a really fun trip. I actually ended up meeting uh, half a dozen other travel video bloggers, and we were there for a press trip. And uh, it was just a great time. And uh, so I was able to take uh, a car around some of the island uh, roads. And I don't know if there's a lot of difference. Um, I think maybe things are maybe a little more well organized in the bigger towns in in America Mm -hmm. or in the mainland. Uh, But it's a beautiful island. I, I definitely recommend heading over there if you've never been. Oh, very cool. Well, Mike, thank you very much for joining me this week on the podcast. Hey, Steve, it was my pleasure. Thanks again, and uh, call me up anytime. Awesome. My friends, you can get all of Mike's information by clicking on the show notes and heading over to chiranger.com. You can, of course, follow his adventures at mikesroadtrip.com and, of course, on Twitter at Mike's Road Trip. That's it for this week's podcast. I will be back next week with a full-length podcast. I would also like to thank you for joining me here on ChiRanger.com or YouTube or downloading the podcast from iTunes. You can keep up with all my adventures on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram by following ChiRanger. But until next time, remember to be true to yourself and always be awesome.